excited to be smack in the middle of our 21 Day Superstar Cleanse and to be joined by a very special guest, Fully Raw Christina. I had the pleasure of meeting her last week at the Yoga Expo and I've already been shifted by her bright light. She just came out with a book called The Fully Raw Diet. She is an inspiration to so many of us of all ages, of all shapes and sizes, and I'm so excited to have her to chat with us. Thank you for being a fully raw inspiration to us all, Christina. Thank you, Rainbow. I loved meeting you in LA, and I just I adore you, and I look up to you in so many ways, so thank you for having me. Thank you. We'll start with just a, a little meditation, just one minute. Um, it doesn't even need to be a prayer. However, we can we can all do wherever you are in the world that we can take a moment to disconnect from whatever wherever we were, whatever just happened, and come into this moment right now. So, thank you for guiding me into my center, Christina. You're welcome. Do you want me to lead it, or yeah, do you guide guide me into my center? <laughs> Thank you so much for this beautiful day, Lord. And I wanna thank you for allowing me to be here with Rainbow and all of my beautiful friends, for allowing us to come together to celebrate life and living food and doing things that will help this planet become a better place for you. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to add and invite us all to throughout this call to really, um, the more you give, the more you receive. It's an open Q&A, so you're welcome to answer questions. If you end up answering or asking questions later, we'll do our best to try to answer them on the actual YouTube video. But the more we give, the more we receive. And one of the ways I open myself into giving and receiving is shoulders up, back, and down. That gives the back the alignment for the heart to open. The word uh, le coeur in French means is the root word of courage. So it actually takes courage for us to open our hearts and to come forward with all of our being. So with that, Christina, I want you to share us the story of how you came to be you know, such an inspiration. Um, I, I know you used to be on medication, you used to have diabetes, and it's really, it's, there's so many people out there that just can't qu cross that bridge and I want to understand where you were at and how you came to be now. But those initial days of like what crossing that bridge meant like, because at this point it probably almost seems like a thing in the past, but um, other people in your situation or even other people with other diseases or um, whether it's even, you know, you name it, whether it's cancer or uh, oh, obesity or different things, it's like you can go from being so stuck in one world and not quite know. It seems it seems untangible to get to the other to the other side. So I want to know what it was like for you. Tell us your story. Oh my goodness. That's a great question. I think most people have heard my story of me meeting John Rose in the grocery store and you know, jumping into a raw food vegan lifestyle in one night and then, you know, eating peaches for two weeks and then discovering that even within three days, I felt a difference of not feeling nauseous and having blackout migraines and just feeling like it was the end of the world and to transforming into myself, which I'm so thankful for living foods because I think one of the greatest gifts that it has given me that God has given me is it's allowed me to finally feel like I was good in my skin. Like I was finally myself. I think a lot of people walk around thinking like, Oh, I don't quite feel myself today or, Oh, I'm too sick. And one day I'll get there. And it's like, when you finally get there, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. The grass really is greener on the other side because you feel the difference that the food makes in your body. You know, and then when you realize it all comes down to a choice, then the transformation is the coolest part, you know, mm -hmm. because it's like you have more energy, your hair grows out longer, your skin clears up, your, well, we can talk a little bit about the emotions that definitely come through and come up when you start eating this way, because it definitely wakes you up to every emotion that you've ever had, whether that be pain or whether that be joy, whether that be sadness, whether that be happiness, you get to explore all of it and you feel everything so much more deeply. And I know for me, the transformation was going from being like emaciatedly thin and having crazy blood sugar level issues to learning how to eat this way when I was 18 years old, which for me now it's, it's almost been 11 years, which is kind of crazy that I haven't eaten cooked food, but it's, it's honestly been just such a 
beautiful journey. Like I love what I do, you know, and um, people can say whatever they want that, oh, that's not true, not this, not that, but it is true. Otherwise I wouldn't still be sitting here today. And um, that's what this book is. My book is merely a reflection of all of this work that I've done within the past 10 years to try and get people to even just incorporate one raw meal a day, even if it's not, you know, going full out fully raw, even just trying one raw meal a day, whether that be a juice or a smoothie or a salad or a gazpacho, just to try one of them every single day, you feel a difference. And I know you know this, and it's it's really amazing the benefits that you feel. And because you know that you start feeling really good because then you get excited about it and you start sharing it with other people, that it's like the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> so, so let's go back. Yeah, absolutely. But let's go back a little bit to this moment where um, you're on medication. I, I have a, a, there's someone who actually asked last night, Yanira from California, currently is diabetic and is taking two forms of medication. She's done my cleanse a couple times and, um, you know, had amazing results. Most people who are diabetic is more of a situation that they're, they've gained, you know, oftentimes they're more overweight in the beginning and then eat, learning to live more on plant-based foods and live foods. They're going to lose weight too. So it can go either way. But as far as I'm not a medical doctor, I was, you know, raised in the natural foods industry, but that moment of, you know, how long it takes, for instance, to... I don't know, get off medication potentially. You know, I know that Dr. Gabriel Cousins and Doug Graham is someone that's worked with people with diabetes. And I'm just, I want to kind of go a little deeper into the nitty gritty of what that journey is like. If there's fear involved, what words of advice do you have with someone who just seems stuck in a rut? Like they think that the medication is saving them. And at the same time, they have side effects like anxiety and high amounts of stress from taking the drugs. So I haven't I haven't been through this experience myself, but people really are you know need to know like that there is a po a possibility to walk walk out of that space of just kind of absolute helplessness. I have so much that I want to say about that because I know what it feels like to feel hopeless and to feel like you are in a dark room in a dark corner all by yourself and that there's no light to pull you up. I have been there many times, and so if your friend is listening. Um, I want to give her hope by saying that diabetes is, especially type two, is something that you can overcome. Um, I had horrible blood sugar levels that were too high and I was underweight, but I would say 99% of the people today with type two diabetes are overweight and have blood sugar issues because of the foods that they're eating. And so number one is the food transition. If you're eating a high fat diet, I don't care if it's raw or if it's vegan or whatever it may be, if you're eating a high fat diet, please be cautious of this. This is your number one problem. Hmm. Take out the nuts, take out the seeds, take out the oils and take them out for at least a two month time period. That is number one and that will help tremendously. Number two would be to increase the amount of exercise that you're doing and the amount of green juices and greens every single day. Those two things could probably essentially shift you in total, but I mean, all of the rest of it is going to come into play, like making sure that you do enough fruit in the day, but doing huge salads at night. And I'm being so incredibly serious when I say to take out the oils, take out the nuts and the seeds, go fat free for like two months. This has more of an effect on your body than eating fruit would. And I know many people think that that's crazy, but that has been like the number one thing that I have learned hmm. it's go low fat if you are a type two diabetic, because so many people are used to eating, you know, sugars and fats and sugars and fats. And the problem isn't always the sugar because sugar can be converted into carbohydrate and used by your body. But sugar and fat together is like a death mix for your, your body essentially. And that's what's going to make your skin break out. That's going to what make you constipated. And so those two things. And the third one would be if they're dealing with helplessness and all of these other things. It's like, we have to make sure that we're really okay with ourselves. No matter where we're at, we have to be okay with being too skinny, too fat, too this, too that. And just coming into a place and looking in the mirror and being like, yes, I accept responsibility because every single one of us has done damage to our body over a certain period of time. Like when I started eating this way, I was 18 and I had to get rid of 18 years of horrible damage that I'd done to my body 
even to this day, we're all, I'm still working at undoing damage to my body, but the first step is like really being okay with every single thing that you've ever done. It's like anything you're not proud of, anything you're proud of. And it's like coming from a place of like acceptance and love and patience. I mean, being vegan is all about having compassion with yourself and with others. And so that is probably the hardest part, I would say. But the emotional component is probably one of the strongest ones because they say mm -hmm. the mind can overcome anything, right? So we're going to try and make all of these work together <laughs> to bring us better health. Wow. Well, that's huge. And I want to go you know, into your book in just a little bit. But first, just touching upon that, because for me, it's, it's a huge... Um, it's it's a huge surprise like I, I there's so many things that I've learned about health just because of the way that I was raised but as far as understanding for instance fat for me um, moving from a cooked food diet in which I ate relatively very healthy and then ha eating all live foods for a period of time found that I had to have you know more avocados more nuts obviously I wasn't diabetic but for me um, my brain just wouldn't feel satisfied. So, so many people are craving that, like the weight in their system. So to, you know, I think it would even take more discipline to um, kind of, I know for me, just to get by without, ha you know, feeling that full feeling that, that fat gives me. And I really recommend eating fat to most people, more fat. So it's it's so interesting and, and really mind blowing of how much, you know, more to understand this particular situation. Um, is it because the liver just can't sort of transmute the fats into energy as easy as it could like a lighter carbohydrate? Absolutely. And like, I mean, you have, it's not just the liver, but it's the pancreas and everything else. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that this, this would be a specific case for diabetics. Mm -hmm. And I, I say that with, with love because normal people could go to you know, a raw food restaurant, eat all the nuts and the seeds in the world. But I know for a fact that when I first had gotten started and I was eating fats and no sugar, I was feeling exhausted. Hmm. I wasn't eating fruit and I was eating greens and fats and greens and fats. I was exhausted. My skin was breaking out and I was still raw hmm. at the time. And I like when you first start eating raw, you feel a difference no matter what. But then it gets to a point where it's like you get in a few months and then you're like, okay, well, I'm not seeing as high benefits anymore. Why not? I was high for the first three months, right? Because that's most people feel that just because they're taking out all the junk. But then your body goes through like these phases where it cleanses and, you know, you ride the wave, you know, you go up and up and up and up and up like that eventually. And it's just like that. But you have to kind of tweak it a little bit. And a high fat diet, no matter what kind of diet you're eating, is not going to be essential for your body. And I grew up eating an extremely high fat diet because my mom, obviously, in her Lebanese food, I grew up drinking olive oil, like no joke. <laughs> and so when I started taking out the fat completely and just doing fruit for a while, I noticed a huge shift. And by huge, I mean, I went from going to the restroom one time a day to going like four times a day. And I noticed that my body was just flushing out toxins like crazy. And so, but for me, that helped because being, you don't have to be fat to have a lot of fat cells in your body, right? Mm -hmm. Your body can still be clogged up with toxins no matter what weight you are. I don't think... It has to do necessarily with how heavy you are. I mean, I, I was a type two and I wasn't heavy at all, but my body had so much, <laughs> so much of like whatever was going on with my fat cells and whatnot that every time that I'd eaten like sugar or whatever, I would have a reaction. But so once I got rid of the fat, my body started cleansing, 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 cleansing. That's when I noticed some major changes started happening. And so obviously I'm not a doctor. Um, my best friend is a type 1 diabetic, and I've been blessed enough to have gotten rid of my hyperglycemia completely. He's done amazing work with reducing all of his insulin levels as well. His name is Robbie Barbera, Mindful Diabetic, if um, your friend wants to go check out his website. But his is completely dedicated to like showing his insulin levels and eating a fruit-based lifestyle as well, which is so cool. Hmm. To be, like people in different stages of doing this, still working at it. And um, it's 
pretty cool. So if you are going to eat fats, it's sort of like, like I know that an avocado has the lipase intact, whereas, you know, any sort of fruit, it's really a fruit um, and a, a fatty fruit that it sort of helps digest itself in a way instead of separating, you know, like the olive oil from the olive, for instance, it's not going to digest as easily. And I know nuts, especially unsoaked, are really difficult. But if someone, not even diabetics, but even people on live food, um, just interested in live foods and how much fat is really assimilable, what are sources of, um, do you, do you recommend a ratio for other people trying out live foods or which fats do you recommend? I guess just go a little more into so if, we're not, if we're not talking about diabetics here, I would say definitely no oils. I do not ever consume oils. They're not on my food list. I don't, I don't even consider oils to be raw, even if they say they're raw because they're highly processed mm -hmm. and you're eating a very condensed amount of fat in like one spoonful. You would never eat that much walking around in nature. You would never find something like that high in fat in nature. So if like I've read 801010, I studied with Dr. Douglas Graham and 10% is really low. I mean, I would say 20% is okay, but I wouldn't do like a 50%, you know, amount of fat in your day. And I say this because it's so easy to eat so much fat, you know, like even just a small handful of nuts or seeds can be 400, 500 calories worth of fat in your day. That's a lot of fat. You know, that's like a third of your day essentially in fat. And while that may make you feel fuller, we want to get your body moving and utilizing other things as well, because I think that takes away from eating more of the greens and more of the fruits. And I know a lot of people who eat vegan or vegetarian and are still really healthy and don't feel benefits because they're eating pastas and nuts and cookies all day. And so I think it takes away from eating the bulk of what we should be eating, which is the fruits and the vegetables. Those are the most nutrient dense foods. They have all the vitamins, they have all the minerals in them, nuts and seeds and fats primarily just have fat. Some of them have a little a bit, little bit of protein in them, but so do greens, so does fruit. And you can get more from those sources than you would if you were to eat nuts or seeds. So if I were to recommend to normal people, I would say, you know, why don't you try throughout the day having juices and smoothies and salads? And then in the evening, my rule of thumb has always been, if you can't fit it in your hand, then it's too much. But if you can't fit in your hand a small amount, just the right amount. <laughs> usually that's a good range between 10 to 20 percent of fat in your day right and most people would think that that's okay and I'd say usually eating that near the end of the day is the best time because that's right when you're getting ready to go to sleep you feel fuller you know you start to feel a little warm and cozy inside like mm, I could take a nap now you know you don't want to eat fats like in the middle of your day because then you're gonna be like mm, I could take a nap but the day is not even over yet <laughs> so wow. It's learning about like the right time and the right amount if you really want to feel your best. And uh, for all the athletes out there, like I'm an athlete, I usually don't ever touch fat unless it's near the end of the day anyways, because when I'm in the middle of my day, I like to be up and active. If I'm running, I'm doing yoga, I'm boxing, whatever. I don't want to be weighed down by food. I want to feel energized by food. Hmm. You know? And so before moving on from sort of this subject, I, I want to just ask um, how long the, like, when did you feel the confidence, I guess, to stop making, taking medication if you were on it? And how did, which, who did you work with to help you make that transition where you're totally liberated from that now? So there, there's that kind of scary part that most people go through. And it's not just for diabetics, it's people that are on cholesterol medicine. I have a friend, a client who's on cholesterol medicine and his numbers have lowered so much but it's like he's still just in that world where to take take that final <laughs> right. deep stuff that we're talking about but um you know I, I hope that just everyone knows that it's just a journey towards increasing health and if you do need medication you do need to be advised by a medical doctor but um you know that's just like a little gray area because i've i've never i haven't taken an aspirin maybe one in my life like i've never taken chemicals and i know that um when I have, they are, they, they, a, a few, I, I experimented with some, you know, heavy drugs as a teenager and I could just see the side effects of them and how much they affect other sorts of consciousness. So I, I'm not saying that I'm immune. I just know that if I wanted to be able to crave foods that are healthier for me, I would want to, tr you know, like where I'm not needing 
more, you know, like a Xanax to go to sleep because I'm anxious. There tends to be this, sorry to the Xanax people, but I'm just saying that there's like this school of over lapping one drug against another because one makes us go this way and then another one we need to go to sleep. So how do we, if you need it, okay, thank God they're there. And how do people take that, you know, get out of that path and how do you go about that? How do you know that you find someone that you trust that can walk you through it? It's you know, a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Um, to say a few things to that would be, A, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I am kind of a rebel in the sense that um, the two people who were advising me when I first stopped taking my medicine, which was that evening that I went raw, I was like, I'm just going to try this for two weeks. I no longer, because I was going into the hospital like every two weeks to get insulin. And wow. it would just make my whole body crash. Like I would vomit. I'd have blackout migraines. My body was just totally rejecting it. On top of that, I was, I think, trying like a bunch of sleeping pills at the time. I was, you know, doing Tylenol, Advil, up the wazoo. Oh, gosh, I don't even remember what other medications I was on. Um, I think that was the time that I discovered I was allergic to penicillin. I don't know why I was on penicillin. I was on amoxicillin. I was on, oh, I don't know. There was like... I choose not to remember those days, <laughs> but I will say that I was a rebel and that I stopped taking them all in one night. Was that smart? Well, I mean, today I can say, yeah, I was a rebel, but no, I would not recommend that for everybody. It wasn't necessarily the smartest thing, but the people who were walking me through it, I felt comfortable doing it because they showed me how much they cared about me mm -hmm. in the sense that they felt more like family to me than these doctors who were talking to me for 15 minutes, writing it on a piece of paper and walking out the door. And these people who were taking the time to talk to me and get to know me and ask me questions about my body and, you know, getting to know me and what was actually going on and making recommendations. And if I ever had a problem, like I remember calling John Rose at three in the morning one time and being like, my poop is blue. Why is my poop blue? I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. You know? And he goes, did you eat blueberries today? I said, yes. He goes, okay, we'll go back to bed. You know? And it's like, <laughs> sometimes we need a little bit of handholding when we're getting started because it's scary. We're going against the norm of what people are telling us to do in regards to eating food. And sometimes just having somebody who has a lot of knowledge. So if you if you don't have a coach in this area, I'd say find somebody who's a coach who can walk you through it and hold your hand. Um, I have tons of coaches I can recommend. Rainbow, I know you do too. I know you do a lot of, you know, helping people and hand-holding as well because you're doing your challenge. Um, I would just encourage people to reach out, you know. Yeah, it seems to be, um, you know, we're all, I'm all, I'm forever the student. And I, you know, although I, my mom is a medical herbalist, and you know she she works on that. And my godmother's a doctor. There still just seems what the mainstream, almost an epidemic of it being normal to get sick, it being normal to have some degenerative disease, to find yourself in a hospital. You know, I, I as healthy as I think I am, and as much as I feel that I'm inspiring people in my house, there's it's only one degree of separation. Every day more than I'm finding, take a particular route that is not looking at necessarily the root, but instead going to you know the extreme, the cutting, the the medication, the radiation, the biopsies, and um, you know it's really a very bold conversation to, uh, for us to be having. I honestly didn't know this would as much be the topic of our conversation, but the fact that you really took this courageous step towards basically Mother Nature to free you. And that makes so much sense to me, but that's because I was raised around it. And I guess it doesn't, it's still sort of a, a missing link for so many people. And I want, you know, to really empower our brothers and sisters out there who are seeking health to realize that it's not just a band-aid or a quick pill that you could take, or even a three-week, you know, cleanse. Although I, I love my three-week program of really walking people at least to try live foods maybe for a week or two. Um, it's, it's amazing how addicted we all, you know, most of us, the majority of us are to having, not wanting to give up something, um, would, would rather take chemicals than, you know, to then kind of like make a lifestyle change. And so again, I think of this as like, 
I take it for granted a little bit. So seeing you inspires me because I, I just see that you've gone through something really powerful and you've, you've taken, you're taking millions of people with you. I haven't mentioned Christina's incredible YouTube channel. I watched some of your wonderful videos and you know everything from cookie dough ice cream made from like frozen bananas and truly what you know what a what a thing that you've chosen to go through this journey and bring so many people with you and i just think that what i would want to know and what other people still want to know is like how do i get from here to there because i still it's still that bridge that um even for me watching you it's like how, how do we help give others the, the the courage and the passion to to do exactly what you did so we won't go back much more except for if, there, if there's anything more that you want to share in that area i think that people will feel inspired and understand more about that journey. The biggest advice I can give is to take it one day at a time because that's what I did. I wrote everything down as I was going through it and I never told myself that I was gonna like do it forever. I just said, I have to do it today because I feel better today than I did yesterday. And for me, that was a big enough motivation. And if people do want to try it for 21 days, it's like my book just came out and there's 21 days worth of meals and recipes that guide you through it day by day. Um, but yeah, you just have to want it. <laughs> yeah. When the will is there, everything else falls into place. Did you have a, like goals, a vision board or anything that kind of reminded you of where you're going? When I first started, no, I had none of that. Like I, I did not have the consciousness or the knowledge or the know-how that I do now. I literally walked into this like blindsided with just the knowledge that was being told to me via John Rose and Dr. Graham. And I must have had an insane amount of trust <laughs> for them because they would literally just say, eat this today. You have that, eat that today. Just make sure you're getting enough calories, write everything down. Write down when you're going to the bathroom, write down how you feel, make sure you're getting in your walk. Because sometimes it's like when you have to pay attention to all this stuff, it gets overwhelming. So for me, it was like, okay, I'm 18. You know, it's not like I was 30 or anything. Like my knowledge to the subject was just eat the food, do the healing, go to school. And, <laughs> and you know, it's like that was the basis of what I was doing. All I really knew, I mean, and keep in mind that when I first started eating this way, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have um all these online sites that are so beautiful now with recipes. I mean, there was a very little amount of information on there. So um, I was going by what was being taught to me by these two men and what I was discovering within my body. And now that I look back, it's a pretty huge gift because I learned how to listen to my heart and listen to my body and what was going on within me, which I, I don't think many people know how to do nowadays, you know? And just the self-diagnosis is a big issue, right? Because they hear something from somebody else and they're like, ooh, I could have a vitamin D deficiency. I'm going to go to Whole Foods and get me some vitamin D. When that may not even be the issue, you know? So it's um, really learning how to tone in. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I love it. So, so let's go into your book a little bit. It's funny to me that we both have 21-day books. And um, I know why I chose my title, Why 21 Days? It takes 21 days to change a habit, and I did a 21-day challenge a few years ago on YouTube, and it had such a great response from people, and it was so helpful that people had a guide that they could to do, but all I had was videos of it. I didn't actually have a written form, so this is a really great resource because people can keep it in their kitchen or take it wherever they want to go and they can go through the 21 days and have it in written form, which is really important, and they can do it as many times as they want. They don't have to watch the videos, it's all just right there, and it has 100 recipes in it. And so walk us through sort of the 21 days. Is it, um, does it get progressively more challenging? Like, is it just that eat one fully raw day a meal, or tell us more about? Um, you can do one fully raw meal, or you can go all out fully raw. It's actually, it's for, it is an all out fully raw challenge, but you can read it and just do one meal, but like you're gonna benefit from all the stories and in the, in the information in it, regardless of whether you decide to jump in or not. So it's great. What's your favorite story like about, don't give us the, all the tidbits, but like your first one that comes to mind. <laughs> um, probably how I started the co-op in Houston. Because I run an organic produce co-op here and it's my community. All these people are my best friends and my family. And so I love getting to talk about that whenever I can. 
That's right. You have the biggest co-op in all of Texas for sure, but is it the country? Like, that's incredible. Tell us a little bit about that. How, you know, we all have ideas, but I notice for me, every time I do eat 100% live foods, it just seems to manifest a little quicker. So tell us how that came to manifest or be. I started a co-op in my garage with like seven to 12 people. And over the years, it's grown significantly. We have um, three locations now. We're getting ready. I'm getting ready to do more ventures with that, but we have a home delivery. Um, we take our produce and we make juices now. If people follow me on Snapchat, I'm usually working there and they see me packing up boxes. We support our local farmers. And honestly, it's um, we have about 52,000 registered members in Houston. Wow. Which is awesome. And um, I just love feeding people food. And I always tell people, I didn't, that's another thing that I really didn't intend, but happened in my, you know, literally fell into my lap, but that once I saw that we had a need for it, I ran with it. And um, I've just fallen in love with our community. It started off with the food and feeding my family, and then it quickly became about something much more. Big family. Yeah. Um, Okay, someone's trying to call. Let me just ask a, a question here. There's some. There's another question. So, um, what do you do for like detoxification symptoms? Like, say you have headaches or you feel really tired, you know, and it makes you want to kind of go back to eating cooked foods. What do you do when you hit that moment? And guys, feel free to ask questions. I guess in just your sidebar if you have them, but. What do you do with the detoxification symptoms? Do you ever even have them? I haven't, had, I haven't had a real headache in years. Um, the only time I'll ever feel slightly lightheaded is if I've been on more than one plane in a day, which lately has been a lot. Uh, but I don't feel bad ever. I don't get headaches. And if that's the case, I'll just get sleep. Hmm. You know, I know that I just need to get some rest. What did you in the beginning? Did you have detoxification symptoms ever? when you started or? Honestly, no, because I was coming from being so sick. I went to, there was, there was no more sickness that I could have been experiencing because I was going in and out of hospitals. I was already emaciated. I was already vomiting. I was already having blackout migraines. So I felt better. I was already at my lowest point. So everything I did from that point brought me up and I've never been back to that level of sickness since. Hmm. Do you um, do you write like everything you eat down now still, or has there become a little more flexibility as you've been doing this longer? I literally wrote down everything I ate for like two years straight every day. Sometimes I even waited because I needed to make sure I was eating enough calories. Now I'm a lot more relaxed about it because I just I know off the top of my head, hey, an apple, you know, seventy five to one hundred fifty calories based upon the weight. I know how much, and I just know these things like the back of my hand. So. Um, I know that I'm eating enough and I've listened to my body a lot more. Like I know when I'm hungry, I know when I'm full and I try and just kind of go by that, that gauge. And how do you know when you're full? How do you know when you're hungry and how do you know what you might need to eat? I'm hungry when the back of my throat starts to salivate <laughs> and I know that I'm hungry if I've just ran like six or eight miles or whatever and it's time to eat and I haven't had food in a few hours. Um, I know that I'm full if it's the end of the day and I'm like, all right, I've had like 2,500 calories. Do I need a little bit more? I probably could. I don't ever limit myself because I think that I'm not, I don't believe in restrictive diets. So I do try and make sure that I feel as satisfied as possible. Greens and green juices help me feel really, really full if I've already had enough fruit. And if I'm ever like really craving something, I don't necessarily like to go and grab fat first thing. I like to grab fruit because that's where the calories are. And like, if I know my body needs more fuel, that's what I go for. And, and okay, what if you're running around, you've had a busy day, let's say you're flying and you've run out of fruit, you've run out of live foods. Um, what do you do? You know, your, your energy's crashing. You flew to... I usually don't. Well, I'm I'm always prepared for situations like that. A, there's usually a grocery store on every corner where you can find apples or a banana. I mean, they're even in airports nowadays. Apples and bananas galore. Um, but I usually carry like mulberries in my bag or dates in my bag always. Like when we were at the expo in LA, 
like, it's funny. I had dates on the table that I was munching on throughout the day with like a bottle of green juice that somebody brought me. And it was, it was just funny because that's, I mean, I think eating raw is easier, easier than eating cooked foods because you can, I just think it's faster to eat them. It's not difficult to find apples or bananas anywhere and you can bring them with you. If you can eat cooked food, you can eat raw. You just have to make a little bit more of an effort to have them available. What about the conversation where people think that it's more expensive to eat this way? What do you say to that? I have saved more money eating this way than anything else because I'm spending less on my medical bills. I'm spending less on the energy in my house because we're not turning on like the stove and all these other things. I personally have saved more money. And even if people are trying to like do organic and superfoods and all the really super pricey things, I say you're investing in your health. And there are ways to go about eating this way. Like I did so many YouTube videos about eating this way on a budget, buying in bulk, going to the farmer's market, joining a co-op. The reason why I created my co-op is because I wanted to be able to afford just organic produce, which, and if you're buying it directly from the farmers, it's cheaper and it goes towards supporting the soil and the land and the local community. And we're creating something sustainable, which is truly important. So I always tell people where there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, not only that, but if they really wanted to, like a case of bananas, only $28 and it's 40 pounds. So you could, you know, live off of a $28 box of bananas for a few days if you really wanted to. That's super cheap. Yeah, I always tell people, you know, it's, just, it's the, the most expensive thing in your grocery bag every time is your animal products and your cheeses and your gourmet foods. To, so to be eating from the garden is actually going to save you way more money. And I also just want to put out that it's a, amazing that we have all these choices and the way that us, you know, plant-based people or people that are inspired by live foods are often very supportive of each other. I really am so glad to have Christina on, but just as like a difference in our philosophy, which it's also the same because it's always about going back to the earth and to the garden. Uh, you know, I've always believed in zero calorie restriction for myself, but I've never had a, a serious situation to kind of overcome. And if you do have any type of food allergies or dis-ease in any way, judgment, things that you are looking at, it's, it is so important to observe, analyze, and comprehend. And through those, through those three jewels, you can, through comprehension, you can truly sort of get rid of an old pattern and then a new virtue or a new opportunity begins. So I've always been a little more, I think, flexible in this, but I just really appreciate the science that you've, um, you know, exposed yourself to in this and your comprehension of yourself and that what you're putting your body in and that which you're sharing um, with so many of us. So I thank you. I'm not done yet. I just, I just want to thank you for that. Just meeting you, you know, so one of, this is a personal question for me. It's like, I used to eat 100% live foods. Um, I think trying to be flexible and being like in the world and I have a kid that's 12 and, you know, she likes her gluten-free pastas and her, you know, other things. Um, there's she eats some eggs, although very, very little animal products. And just um, especially when I make food, especially when I'm making like my soups or my pastas, I love to eat them. And however, I do this cleanse, the 21 day superstar cleanse, where I go back to live foods for sure four times a year. Usually I start to feel so good and so energized that I do it longer. There's always like, but, um, you know, it's a little bit exhausting, I would say, just like from my heart to yours. It's like um, meeting you, just your energy alone was like, gosh, I definitely know I feel my best when I eat 100% live foods. And what is that about my own addiction to the taste of things that I, you know, go on this roller coaster where it's like I go on and then I get back off. And I, what part of me thinks that, you know, I'm going to get more freedom and liber liberty by having fun and eating whatever I want. You know, I'm a rebel almost to my own health. And at what point for me in my own soul, do I make that committed, conscious, courageous decision to say, okay, I'm going to do what makes me truly feel the best, the most open, the most pure, the, the for me, the lightest in um, kind of, you know, baggage. And, and usually just things start coming to me so quickly. I'm absolutely my most flexible. That's how I do my handstands. It all comes from, you know, these programs that I do when I stop eating the junk. And yet, you know, something eventually comes and I'm like, okay, I'm done with my four weeks, my five weeks, whatever. And I'm going to 
have some cake now. And so I guess you could try to support me individually and just say, like, what can I, you know, speak to this, speak to my um, yo-yoing or my roller coaster and help me be my best version of myself. Fambo, I love you. <laughs> You're perfect and beautiful just as you are. Keep in mind that a craving is just a craving. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's like we don't always want what's best for ourselves. Like. I think the element of self-sabotage, even if it's just desire, is really powerful. You know what I mean? Because it's like, um, oh, I don't want to work out today. Oh, but I know working out will make me look better and feel better. And it's like, oh, but I don't want to work out today. So when you get into the habit of working out, it's like, yeah, you get really into it. And it's like, okay, if you have to schedule it in, if you have to talk yourself through it, then it's like, okay, you have to find out what you do enjoy because nothing should ever be force fed. And I know this because there are tons of workout things that I don't like to do, but then there are a few that I just love. And so it's like, I would recommend to you, it's like, okay, what about this do you love the most? What makes you feel like rainbow? You know, what? why were you attracted to this in the first place? Always ask the why. Like, what made you feel so loved about this? What made you feel so bright and shiny and vibrant? And yes, those other foods are tempting, but there's a million different ways that you could make those foods raw and still have them be delicious and feel good about yourself. Because I promise that the second that you make the choice and you're dedicated to it, and then you kind of like say no to the other, you're going to feel even better about yourself because you're doing what you really want to be doing, you know? And... I know that nobody really ever wants to hear that answer <laughs> because everybody always wants a quick fix in a society that, you know, there's a pill for everything. And is it really easy to eat raw in this society? No, it's actually, they've made it impossible for us to eat this way, especially when not everybody's eating this way. And sometimes it can make you feel alone or you don't have enough people to do it with. And I'm sure if we all lived in like this giant, you know, community where everybody only ate raw and we could go to restaurants every day. It was just easily available. Or maybe even if, you know, we were never even introduced to these other foods, it would be much easier, but it's not. So it's, it's up to us as teachers and inspirations to be there for other people, to guide them and to live as an example. I know that that's kept me going, um, you know, especially with eating this way and I want to just give you the biggest hug right now because I, I, I know how you feel. It, it, sometimes going yo-yoing back and forth can be really, really difficult too. Because it's like things, you know, I mean, there's so many raw food restaurants in LA, right? And they have vegan foods too offered at these raw vegan restaurants. And so it's like you go and you sit down and you're like, oh, but I want, I want that too. It couldn't hurt me, could it? Right? And so I would say maybe just reminding yourself how much you love yourself, and you're doing it. right? Even when I realized I forgot to turn off the ringer in the kitchen, please stop ringing. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I've had that happen before, so. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, when I return, every time I return to all that was created from a place of clarity when I was not getting in my own way and, and um, and really being courageous about it. It's just so, it's so beautiful. And that's why I'm so grateful that this program is even here, that honestly to me it is the quickest pill that I've ever learned to be able to get to a place of sluggish and sort of breakouts and less than vibrant skin. And then three weeks later to find more energy, um, an openness, just watching this sort of inner glow. That Because when we're eating live foods, we're really looking for the fire. We're looking for the spark of life, the enzymes that are the catalyst for every major function in our body or, you know, they've been scientifically proven to help with inflammatory disease and so many other things. And, you know, uh, my mom, I just, one story is she's an herbalist and would find herself always recommending herbs or drugs or natural drugs. She works at a holistic pharmacy. And, you know, once people can just start, you know, eating more live foods, they might find that they might not need as many, whether it's natural medicine or even synthetic medicines for the diseases that we have. And, you know, it brings me into another conversation, but why does man die? Like, we don't actually die, we kill ourselves. It's like, we know we shouldn't do something, but we do it anyway. We know 
that certain things are not good for us, but we do it anyway. And this virus of our consciousness is everywhere. You ask my, my dear friend David Wolf, it's like, well, let's talk about the conversation of ego. And it's, it's very connected to food. Um, it's like us choosing, we have the abundance of Mother Earth's medicines at our feet, literally at our feet, and yet we choose sometimes the furthest things from it. No one is perfect. I am not perfect. I'm like a humble student of this work, and I continue to be inspired by people of all essences. But what really inspires me about you, Christina, is um, I think of the purity and the the clarity that you have, and I hope that you know you forever still have this. I think being in the live foods movement for a second, just because I'm you know little, just being a few a few seconds, um, is just that there was there's a lot of live foods and there's definitely a sense of vibrancy and health. However, there is also a lot of drugs um, and that, not so much the drugs because clearly it's a popular thing. It's, there's just some, the ego is everywhere even where people are eating live food. So is there anything that you can speak to as far as that? Like how do you couple live foods with also a sense of virtue and, and clarity and purity instead of just what I've seen is, you know, some other things that get, maybe it's that the dark is attracted to the light. So where there's sort of goodness, we are tested to, um, you know, find challenges even there. I don't really know the answer, but what, what do you think of when I talk about this and how can you share from us that which you've created such a pure, fresh, vibrant um, message? Thank you, Rainbow. And mm -hmm. I feel like I have so much, again, I want to say about that. I haven't been, my first thing would say, I would like to say is it's like, you have been in this movement for a much longer time than me, you know, and you've seen, and you live also in the LA scene, you know, so you've seen more happen. Like I've seen a lot of like the online hate and the drama and, you know, people calling me fat and this, and I have never really been exposed to the drug scene in the raw food world. And then again, I live in Texas. I don't live in LA. So you've probably had a lot more exposure to that. If it were me in your shoes and somebody walked up to me and offered me pot or something, heroin or I would just immediately say no, because in my heart, I've, I've always known that that's wrong. I've never been attracted to smoking or drugs. And for somebody, I, I think it's a serious issue for a lot of people, especially in this movement. I do know some people doing some hardcore drugs and I've, I've stopped talking to them because I've seen them go a little bit mentally cray cray. <laughs> and that's not the message that I choose to spread. And, you know, more importantly, it's like my grandparents always used to say, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not what I'm about. I don't want to promote drugs because that's the same to me as promoting something that's not healthy for your body. And if we're getting into this to relieve ourselves from sickness and disease, and to help other people, I don't see how using any type of abusive substance is going to help get us off of that addictive train, because that's what it really is. It's addiction. And so sometimes we really do have to like dig deep and ask ourselves, like, why am I doing this? What is this for? Am I here to satisfy my own temptations, my own cravings, or am I here to live as an example and do the best that I can do and listen to my heart and know what's right and to heal? Because when we heal ourselves, we're not just healing ourselves, we're uplifting every energy and every other person around us, you know? And so as difficult as it may be to say no, there's always gonna be somebody who's standing with you, whether you're on this side of the fence or that side of the fence. And you just have to decide like, what's really important to me? What's best for my health? What's gonna be best for me to be able to encourage and help other people? And how do I wanna help them? Mm. I love it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, even it's funny how the conversation went from, you know, <laughs> pharmaceutical drugs to then recreational. And just yeah, I'm down. Down. <laughs> I guess we're moving towards Mother Earth. We're moving towards nature, which is where I want to kind of go. I want to sort of as we tailor or sort of wind down this conversation, I think we've worked a lot on the interpersonal, on our own quest for sort of the micro cosm to how to get well from a place of not being well and then you know, that journey onward. But then I want to touch upon the sustainability for the planet. You know, you working alongside farmers and 
regeneration of agriculture and sustainability and just sort of the bigger picture of being part of the solution interpersonally and how that has an effect on our planet. You know, who, what are your thoughts as an environmentalist and how, for instance, eating this way um, or not has an effect on the planet? Oh my gosh, how does it not have an effect on the planet? It's like all we're doing is eating goodness. Right? Like we're eating things that are grown straight from the earth. And that's what we want to have, right? No worries. Hey, I'll just keep talking. Um, I think more importantly, it's like what are what are we using our dollar to support, right? And we want to be supporting local farmers. We want to be supporting our local economy and our local community and all of those things. And when we buy local, when we buy organic, that's exactly what our dollar is voting for. And at the end of the day, when, you know, let's say that there are no factories or no this, the one thing that's going to be sustainable is growing your own food. Like if there was an apocalypse, the only thing that people would be able to rely back on would be growing your own food. That would be our method for survival. That's what we are meant to be eating, our fresh fruits and vegetables. It is the most important thing. Absolutely. And then when you, when you talk about survival list, it reminds me of, our friends, the weeds, which is, you know, a weed is a plant whose virtue is not yet known. That was Elizabeth, some, some great author. And, um, you know, we can, most of us can recognize, especially a younger generation, because I'm, I'm, I'm before you. And I noticed that people recognize five to 10 to 20 logos, but not necessarily the plants that are growing right in their front yard. And as much as we mow, we spray, we um, try to cut down when we talk about economic economically eating what do you so how do you incorporate wild plants and these medicines that are literally growing without even having to buy them in our lives what do you um do you eat weeds <laughs> i mean i would put a live leaf weed in my smoothie <laughs> um i believe that greens in general are like medicine for our bodies i don't you know go out and hunt or harvest them specifically, but I definitely know like watercress and, you know, alfalfa sprouts and, you know, alfalfa greens and arugula and asparagus. Like I know all of these really powerful greens can be really great used in a green smoothie. I don't ever really go out and like find them or harvest or hunt them out myself. I have nothing against weeds. I think they're great. Personally, it's great. They're at all of the farms that we're at. They grow, it grows everywhere. It's actually really good and sweet and salty. Yeah, totally. I mean, I just, I sounded so much like my mom when I said that because my mom, you know, but I absolutely, that's if one thing I've learned is I now have an edible, you know, garden and I'm trying to really incorporate dandelion in my green juices and stuff. So, but I think that even, even that is a medicine, dandelion's a medicine for di, di, you know, it's a great diuretic and it's great for the liver, but what is it? why do we need medicines? It's, a, it's funny how Mother Nature will grow what we need the most. And I think above all, it's get back to the place where we are not putting in the stuff that's making us sick right. and, um, and also eating in alignment with things that are being part of the solution. Tell me more about um, this just one, like tell me your favorite recipe. Let's say I'm going to start today and I want to take this on and I'm going to do the, I'm going to order Christina's book, the 21 day challenge, the fully raw, what's the name again? <laughs> raw diet. Um, fully raw diet. And I want to like, I want to start, where do I start? Like, how do I, let's say I don't have the book yet, but I want to start tomorrow. And I have the book already ordered on Amazon. And by the way, I ordered Rainbow's 21 day superstar cleanse at the same time. They're both there. We're both in your kitchen. And what do I do? What's the rest of my week going to look like? I would start with day one and day one being just start with eating a bowl of your favorite fruit that easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need a blender. All you would really need would be a knife and a cutting board. You know, like just pick a rainbow bowl of fruit, have watermelon, apples, oranges, papaya, mango, whatever makes you happy, but just make sure that you're eating enough of it to feel really full. Like don't just have like a bite of mango, have like a mango, an apple, an orange, a few grapes, like have a substantial amount, like whatever I would post on Instagram, like go have a big bowl of fruit and have fun with it. And then from there, you can learn how to make more smoothies. And then you can blend up like bananas and cherries and nectarines and coconut water. There's so many different things you can do that I recommend. But and what, 
And then two other questions is what do I do when I'm out with a friend and they ask me why I'm not eating, you know, what they're eating? My first response will, would be, oh, my God, because it's so good and it's so good for you. Do you want to bite? <laughs> <laughs> Most likely they'll say yes, because when you share it with them, they're more likely to be excited about it with you than to think something's wrong with you because you keep it to yourself. So sharing it is the most important thing. And then you can just be like, you know, because I'm really trying to be healthy. And if they make fun of you for it, then you just know they secretly want to be in your shoes. They just don't have the inner strength to do it. So you keep strong. Yeah, like I think that's the biggest thing I notice. Um, people on my program around week two, they start to get a little nervous around week two because the family and the friends start saying, oh, where are you getting your protein? Or this isn't. Um, Ayurvedic enough, even though I'm certified in Ayurveda, my godmother's an Ayurvedic doctor, and you know, there is the cleansing actually for cleansing live foods is absolutely the best. And um, but the conversation gets to people, so you spoke upon it, but you seem to be one of those really courageous individual thinkers. So, even a little more on how to not be affected by the conversation of others, and how even me, I think I try to people please a bit and try to be normal. And if someone says, um, Oh, I made these great organic, you know, brownies, but you probably won't eat them. When they say that, I almost feel like, no, I'm going to have some. Yeah, you know, like it hurts me when someone says no. that. So, you know, to speak to us more on that. I, you know what? I've had a lot of practice in the past 10 years of saying no. But the thing is, it's like when I ask myself, okay, what can I do to be true to myself? Do I want that brownie? The answer is really no. I don't want to eat that brownie. So why would I say yes to make somebody else happy? That means I'm only going to make myself unhappy. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that I wouldn't be making that choice for me. I would be making that choice for them. And then I would feel resentful. And resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. That's not going to help anybody. I've learned how to kindly just say no or, oh, do you have this instead? Or, oh, I'm, I'm so thirsty. Can I have a water? Or... I mean, there's so many ways to go about that conversation. You know, for me, for a long time, it was, oh, I'm hyperglycemic. I can't, but I would love to have an apple if you have an apple. People like to feel like they're giving or they're offering, you know, and so maybe just sharing a different something with them. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just, and also letting people know it's like, hey, you're there to share your company with them. You're there to talk with them and love them and get to know them. And it's not all, it doesn't always have to be centered around food. Yeah. Beautiful. And then, and then finally, um, if you're in the middle of the snow and it's super cold and you're feeling, you know, like you just need something warm or more comfort food, how do you address that situation? I love warm fires and blankets and cuddling with people and <laughs> I love warm baths. Um, I also think that I feel warmer when I get in a really great workout and I get my muscles moving. My body just naturally produces heat. I've stopped relying on food for feeling warm a long time. I think I, you know, it's um, I've gotten really used to just allowing my body to produce heat or just being with people, working out, getting warm by being in a warmer climate. I live in Texas, and um, yeah. That's that's I don't go to like the warm food thing in my head. I just it's been so long. I don't really go there anymore for that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think tea is great. If people want to do tea, that's great, too. It's just warm water. So. OK, and then what else, if anything else, did we not cover that you'd like to cover? I just want to share everybody, tell everybody how much I love them and appreciate you. And thank you for having me today and how much I appreciate you guys supporting me. It means the world. And I'm so excited to see this just come into fruition and inspire more people to get on this healthy train. I have an, one more personal question. Um, it's actually someone, I'm remembering someone else asked me as far as um, what to do, like your social media um, savvy. Do you think that your clarity is coming from eating your live foods? Because literally someone that's, you know, already spent a year of possibly brain damaging themselves from whatever, whether it's drugs or cooked food, like they have a hard time keeping up with the social media um, aspect. And even some of the most basic things, I'm somewhere in the middle, like I think that certain technology things are really simple and I'll find like the older community overwhelmed by it, overwhelmed by Snapchat, overwhelmed by 
Instagram even or any of this new technology. So what, what words of wisdom do you have to keeping up, I guess, with this the new technology? I didn't even know what to say to that. I would just say to just share what inspires you. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's so many different modes of social media right now. Just find the one that works for you and just share within your heart. I have learned over just the past few years of being on social media that if something didn't feel right, people weren't receptive to it. But if I was just being myself, then that's what felt good to me. And do you have, where's your boundary in it where you're like, this is just too much. I can't, I can't manage this aspect or, you know, and it's probably only going to get more and more so for you. Like, do, how do you navigate? Both I through? manage all my accounts. I post every time somebody pressed the post button, it's always me. I've never had anybody else press post except for me. Um, I've never done anything that I didn't want to do. Okay. I mean, that's it. That's and just like with, with people um, Facebook messaging you or probably what is that direct messaging? You know, there's probably just a lot of energy and how do you go turn about responding? I have to turn off my Facebook direct messaging, unfortunately. Um, because I've had to prioritize and be like, where is my work bigger? Should I be behind a computer all day answering questions or should I be a co-op feeding people? Mm -hmm. And the answer to me is like, I want to be a co-op feeding people. So um, I do what I can, but I'm never going to like, you know, force myself to do something else. And and if I can't, then it's like you get more help. People be like, hey, can you help me answer my messages while I'm over here sorting vegetables? No problem. You know, and hopefully people are understanding of that. So, yeah, just for me to answer that is um, one thing that I've learned is um, like in the expansion of our walking into our dreams, rather than saying no to what I can't do, I find ways to like um, expand and, and get the support that I need. So for you as a leader, whether you know, you're going to be a leader in whatever you do to not, if you're saying no to the universe, then you're not going to have more. So instead kind of step into it, but find structure. Like you just said, have help, get help. There's always someone that is going to benefit from um, the light that that we have if we really are doing the work. If you really are great at something, they're going to find you. And there really is probably no better way than what we're putting in our mouth, what we're thinking, what we're doing as a daily practice. So that's my advice. And um, I just want to acknowledge you, Christina, for your work. I want to acknowledge any of the viewers that came on board, any of the people that are just now watching and tuning in and might ask questions later, I want to acknowledge you for your curiosity, for your um, the questions, the question that your being might have to live a life more full of vitality and courageous, light-filled, inspired being to um, really walk with us on this journey to understanding your intuition from your belly, from your gut, and how to eat foods that are gonna create more life force instead of take away from it. And whether you are um, like Christina and ready to just take on and fully walk away from some of the, I wanna say dependency on pharmaceutical medicines just because there are other, other ways in which you can heal, if you're going to take this on 100%, if you're going to take on, you know, maybe try just a 21 day cleanse like me, like there's a beginner's intermediate and advanced level, I'm super, you know, easy does it. However, you know, go further, use all of the resources. There's incredible YouTube channels out there and a lot of people that are there to support you, but definitely we are. And I'm so inspired by Christina. Please get her book right away. I've said it a few times. Mine is on my way, which is I've messed up a couple of times with the title, but I just am so, so grateful for all that you share, for your YouTube channel, for your book, for your, I know you have an ebook, and hopefully we get to continue to collaborate more together. We need to keep lifting each other up, inspiring ourselves so that we can inspire the world. And let's all go ahead and close our eyes, put our hands on our hearts, take a breath, and I'd like to end today's um, just time together that we've been able to spend with a little mantra and we're just going to acknowledge ourselves. So we'll say it together, I'll say it and you'll repeat me, I'll say, I am healthy, I am courageous, I am open, and I am alive. So we'll say that together. I am healthy, healthy. I am open, I am, open. I am courageous, I am, I am alive. 
Yes, you are. Yes, we are. Thank you so much for your being, and we look forward to continuing to serve you and see you somewhere soon. God bless. Thank you.